Amidst my hunt in the web for different housings, I chanced upon one that greatly piqued my interest, it was sober housing, as it turns out, it's a housing especially for people recovering from drug or alcohol abuse, a bridge between an inpatient facility and the real world. Searching further, I'll be sharing to you the knowledge I've been gaining so far. Sober living houses are also called halfway houses or recovery houses, and it had been mentioned in https colon slash slash footprints to recovery dot com slash sober living recovery homes slash sober living house rules slash that it's a place where the residents basically agree to remain sober while living in the house as well as comply to any drug testing requests. One thing to take note of would be that sober living houses are not treatment centers. Did you know? Sober living housings are said to have actually begun in the 1830s through institutions like YMCA, YWCA, and the Salvation Army, religious groups with strong convictions about sobriety as those had been the groups that usually ran these housings that time. It was in the 20th century, during the post-World War II era, that Alcoholics Anonymous had been born, now the largest and oldest alcohol support group in the world as the need for sober living homes, that usually ran these housings that time. It was in the 20th century, during the post-World War II era, that Alcoholics Anonymous had been born, now the largest and oldest alcohol support group in the world, as the need for sober living homes had exponentially increased with the arrival of more alcohol and drug problems, tighter living quarters, and bigger cities in this era. At that time, Existing sober living houses were being pushed out as there had been a lack of affordable housing. With the increase of homelessness during the 80s and 90s, it had contributed to the amount of alcohol and drug problems within the population as an article had mentioned that a conservative estimate of 40% homeless people falls into alcohol addiction while 15% falls into drug addiction. It was only during the second half of the 20th century that several self-sustaining models of sober living homes emphasizing peer support and democratic leadership had been brought about. There had been a time when different models had a manager to do the collections of rent and kick out people who have relapsed but nowadays, it had been agreed upon that the peer council is a better route as it promotes unity and teamwork. Meanwhile, just like every other housing. Sober housings have different kind of types which are traditional sober living and high accountability living. What is the difference between the two you ask? Well, while their labels sort of speak for themselves, to elaborate further. Traditional sober living. As per my research, this mostly serves as a structured environment for one to continue recovering from addiction while recovery support services are provided with the goal of long-term sobriety in mind high accountability living. Meanwhile, I have learned that this type of sober living grants lesser freedom as this tends to be stricter and quite crucial after residential treatment with a higher level structure in tow and a daily schedule of activities facilitated by staff. Hence, it usually recommended as the best option for one who had been followed by relapse after their treatment multiple times. Another thing we may confuse sober living with is halfway house especially to those who are quite knowledgeable about housings, so take note, while sober living does not require completion nor an active enrollment into formal rehabilitation treatment programs meant for addictive impulses, halfway houses work vice versa, in which the aforementioned is actually required. Moreover, in regard to the owners and time limit, one can usually stay as long as they like as long as they pay the rent and help with house duties as it is usually private owners, charities and business who own sober living houses. Meanwhile, halfway houses are usually funded by the government with a maximum stay limit of 12 months. Now that we've cleared that up, let's move on to what we usually look out for, the rules, benefits, and risks that come along with sober living homes. Luckily for us, https colon slash slash footprints to recovery dot com slash sober living recovery homes slash sober living house rules slash had covered all three topics benefits of sober living homes with addiction being a complex issue recovery is a continuous treatment as it doesn't end after completing rehab or formal treatment and as we all know we need time to adjust to our surroundings and circumstances accordingly the same could be said to those who had gone through rehab as it can be hard for them to move right back to life, especially when life is full of surprises, both good and bad, 
such as responsibilities and potential triggers. Now this is where the benefits come in. Sober living can be of help with the needed setup for the transition and balance between the living in the real world, as one is free to work or go to school, functioning within society all the while being held accountable for one's recovery. Moreover, as one gets to live with like-minded individuals in recovery, they can help keep each other accountable in their own journeys as many people even tend to develop meaningful and fulfilling relationships with their roommates, which is a very good thing as these relationships can be essential for one's mental health, risks and downsides of sober living homes. When there are benefits, there would naturally be downsides as well. No matter the case, there is no 100% in regard to chances of something happening in life, and the same is applicable to relapses as it can occur anywhere, even in some sober living homes. Moreover, we have to keep in mind that nothing is free and that there are fees to be paid as sober living homes may be more expensive than living independently. These fees go toward the following as listed. Rent, house management, drug testing, other costs associated with running a sober environment, rules and regulations for living in a sober living house. The following is cited from the aforementioned source. As mentioned, each home has its own rules, but there are some common house rules most homes require. No drugs or alcohol are allowed on the premises. Some exceptions may be made for specific prescriptions, like antidepressants. Residents must pay their appropriate expenses to live in the home. Residents must participate in household activities like weekly meetings and regular chores. Residents must have completed detox and rehabilitation, and they should have a plan to go to therapy or 12-step meetings at least once per week. Residents must sleep at the sober living house at least five nights per week, with very few exceptions for travel. Residents agree to participate in randomized drug and alcohol screenings. Residents are accountable for their whereabouts when they are not on the property. Residents must adhere to the house's curfew. Residents are not allowed to have overnight guests. Residents must respect other housemates and home staff. Residents are not allowed to have pets, except if the home permits. After all of that, I bet you're now asking, what results should we expect if we choose to live in sober living homes? Going back to what I've read in https colon slash slash www.segwayrecovery.com slash sober living explained slash, it turns out that it's actually the accountability and support network that helps the people in the housing stay sober as it is usually hard for them to stay as so on their own. Mentioned in the link was, the best results are seen when an addict has transitioned from a formal drug or alcohol rehabilitation program and then goes straight to sober living. The addict then has a follow-on support to ensure they can live in long-term sobriety. If you're starting to take sober housing into consideration, may it be for yourself, a friend, or a relative, you can always consult with them to help reach a conclusion yourself. After all, adjustment needs time and the way I see this approach is that it is both comfortable and friendly as it takes into account a person's mental health, which has been and is still very crucial nowadays. For now, here are some tips to improve your chances of staying sober and further info regarding the perks sober living housings can provide from https colon slash slash www.addictioncenter.com slash treatment slash sober living homes slash a sober living home acts as a supplement to an individual's recovery it is an alternative to going from an immersive care environment straight to a totally unstructured environment at home because sober living homes replicate normal, everyday life situations while instilling healthy habits, they help to reduce the chance of relapse. Sober living homes help residents do a number of things that will guide them throughout recovery, making amends with friends and family members affected by one substance abuse, finding a job, locating housing after treatment, adjusting to sober living in an unstructured environment. Additionally, Following a carefully designed aftercare plan, including a relapse prevention plan created in therapy, allows you to identify triggers that may entice you to use once you're living in the community again. It further provides healthy coping skills and emergency contact numbers in times of high stress or high cravings slash urges to use. 
This way you will have a plan of action for what to do during these times and have healthy ways to manage triggers in your daily life.